the paper. Okay, again, welcome back to, welcome to this class to the lab today is February 18th. I think when uh, we probably canceled the lecture, that's why we don't have a lot of people right now attending, but I uh, assume that people will at least watch this thing later on because this is a lab and it's important. And as I mentioned before, it's critical for your grade. So you really don't want to miss any of the labs, okay? Now, uh, we are, we're not going to miss much by having just basically the lecture today not, uh, not done. So we should be in good shape for that. And we'll talk about how the lab works today. And basically, we're going to go through a lab. Let me get the settings for it, first of all. I would need this ruler. And I need strings, but I really don't have any string for right now. And I really don't, I'm not going to do the demo for the string. You guys are going to do it yourselves. So, uh, so we're going to be talking about the lab today, the process for it. What happened between the last time when we met on Tuesday and today, at that time we were under 16, the number of people in the class. Today, actually, we are over 20. I mean, the number of people who are enrolled in this class, I think uh, they stand at this point at 22, which puts us at, uh, at an issue with the, with the, uh, with the uh, on-campus exams because April, the, the week after, the spring break, we're supposed to have uh, the midterm on campus and the final also is gonna be in campus. So we have three exams total. Uh, two of them are on campus and one of them is actually online. Now the two that are on campus cannot be one group. We have to have two groups, okay? Half of us have to come on Tuesday. The other half has to come on Wednesday. The way I had it structured is if you choose group one, you're going to be doing the midterm on Tuesday, and you're going to be doing the final on uh, Thursday. If you are on group two, you're going to be doing the midterm on Thursday, but the final is on Tuesday. That way, everybody is basically is here and there. Okay, so there is no, uh, it's not like you, you're going to do both. So there is a survey right now. It's on Canvas. And it's on a first come first serve basis, meaning if you fill it out first before anybody else, you're going to have your choice most likely respected. Okay. So if the person, if we, let's say for example, everybody wants group one. So if you take group one, group one, and by that time, half of the people are already in group one, well, the other half will be just basically pushed toward the group two and so on and so forth. That way you guys know what's going on. So I don't know if you guys have had the chance when you went today to the module, you saw a survey, it says examination. Let me find it exactly. Did I put it in the wrong place? I think I did. Ah, oh, no, this is not correct. This is not the class, I'm sorry. I'm looking at a different class, okay. So let me go back into models. Yes, it says uh, examination groups survey. Did you guys see it? These those who are here? Yes, I see it. Okay, so when you click on it, it should take you to a survey. Despite of the fact that you're logged into Canvas, you still need to put your name and, uh, and uh, because it's really not on Canvas, it's actually on Office 365. It's allowing me to generate an Excel immediately out of this file. So basically, I will still need your name. I still need your ID. And you, I want to give you the option to choose which group you are going to be in. And if you have any additional com comments, and do not forget to click the Submit button in the bottom. Okay, It does not submit it on its own. So it's critical. Let me for, uh, change the view in here to Studio View to uh, share with you exactly what I'm talking about in here. So this is how it looks like, basically. And all of this is explanation of what this thing is purpose of with. So you're going to put your name in here. You're going to put your uh, ID in here, student ID. And you're going to tell me which group you would want to go to. And then 
if you have any additional com comments. By this time, if you forget to submit, you didn't do anything. So you still are basically uh, undecided. Okay, you're leaving it up to me to make that call for you. Okay. Does this make sense to you guys? At least for those who are here. Yes. Yes, makes sense. Okay, very good. Yes, so, okay, very good. So uh, today we're going to be talking about the lab. So let me get into the lab and explain the process for the lab. Okay, and how we're going to be doing labs. Most of the labs that I do in my classes are, uh, for the vast majority, there uh, I, I generate them. Basically, I make these labs. And uh, most of the times they use simulations, okay? Some of them, I, I, I take the simulations from FET, which is the resource that a lot of people are using, and basically add the instructions to them. Usually labs take time, take about three hours time. So you really have to dedicate, dedicate time to do those. It's not like you're going to say, okay, it's a lab, maybe it's half an hour, no. It's really, you're going to spend, uh, uh, time to do that. So you make sure you do that. And uh, and fill out a report. And I'm going to go through all of these details in here. The lab is supposed to start from 5 o'clock and ends at 8, 10 p.m. We spend usually anywhere between half an hour to 45 minutes discussing the instructions. And what is special about that lab? And if need be, I can go through a demo and basically get you going. So what I do after that is I turn off my microphone. I turn off the camera. I leave the speakers on so that if you guys have any questions or something, and you guys have the option at that point, either to stay and finish the lab until 8, 10 p.m., that in which case I'll uh, end the session, or you can leave because, for example, you don't have the materials or you plan, you know exactly what to do. So you can finish it later on, for example, on Friday or Saturday or whatever, and then submit it later on. So basically, you have that leeway. Now, if none of you guys stays, it doesn't matter what time it is, then I'm going to end the session. You guys understand? So that's how the process works for the lab. If in case you stay and you have a question, just speak up because I probably, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to have the headset on my ears to hear what you guys are talking about. Just speak up and make sure that you're, uh, you're uh, spoken. Give me about a minute or so at most, okay? Maybe half a minute or so to get in here, get on the chair, turn on the speaker, turn on the camera again, and then see what's going on with the lab. Try to fix what you have guys going. You guys understand the process in general and how to do these labs? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, most of the labs are going to be actually activities. There will be times where we need labs to do uh, problems or exam reviews or something like that because we have more weeks than actual labs. So sometimes we will say, okay, this lab is, we're going to do something else instead, okay, during the lab session. And if that's the case, because there is a saturation point, especially if we're going to do some lecturing in it, we cannot do the entire three hours. It's too much for you. It's too much for me to, I mean, after research indicates that after an hour, an hour and a half, people basically are not focusing anymore. And there is no point of continuing the discussions that way, unless we're actually doing things. Okay. So the week this week is loaded with stuff. So let me pull out the, uh, the, uh, review, the module. Let me share with you the screen. So this is how it looks like. Are you guys looking at physics 4B 33332 models and we're in unit one? Yes. Yes. Okay. So we're looking at the lab. Let's look at the lab right now. And it tells you immediately when it's due. Okay. Gonna pull the lab in here. And it has a bunch of things in here, a lot of instructions in here on how to handle the lab. One of the things is this file. I know it says use this file instead. Right now I fixed them so that both of them are identical or they should be, okay? 
If there is a discrepancy, a discrepancy between them, this one is actually better than the first one. But both of them, they should be the same. So this is the lab instruction on how to do the lab and basically how, how to go about doing this lab and so on and so forth. I know at least one of you guys is sitting in Physics 4C. So it's going to be similar to Physics 4C, so if you guys are uh, wondering. So uh, you, you, you open the file. You save it to your desktop. Do not open it. Because if I try to click on it right now, it's going to tell me. Let me click on it. I don't know. It's going to say open. And sometimes it's immediate. I don't know if you guys see this, uh, this dialog box that popped up in my screen or not. It says open with Firefox because I was using I'm using Firefox for uh, as a browser, so it defaults to using it with a browser. Do not use a browser for PDF files, okay? For this type of PDF file, the reason why is because this is a fillable file, and browsers are notorious for not saving things, and you would want to save things, so. Save it, save the file to your browser. Open it preferably with a PDF reader, okay? Such as Adobe Reader itself, okay? That is actually a PDF, that's a file, that program that's going to, uh, to help you do this, this, this report. And then you're required to do things on the form. So let me open the file itself. But before I do that, let me go through something which is critical the way I do uh, things in this class and any class for that matter, similar. There is a rubric in the bottom. What that means is this is how you're going to be graded. If you miss one of these items, you know exactly how many points you're going to miss. If you miss this item, you know the objective, for example, you know how many points you're going to miss. And to be uh, clear, you need to structure it in this format also to get the full credit for it. Same thing with the question in here. There is a question. All the questions are worth two points, OK? You lose one point if you forget the units or you don't answer or there is some missing stuff, complete sentence. So the question, for example, it tells you, uh, is the error more than 5%, OK? If it is more than 5%, you're supposed to do this and this. If it's less than 5%, you're supposed to do this and this. You're not going to tell me, because the question asking if the error is more than 5%, and the error apparently is probably, let's say, for example, it's 2.3%. You're not going to tell me no. That's not acceptable. You have to put it in a full sentence. The error that I calculated was 2.3%, which is less than 5%, and then what does the question, the second part of the question entails? What is it asking you to do if it's less than 5%? If the error, for example, is more than 5%, it's asking you to do something else, probably repeat the experiment or do something or how to improve the error or something like this. Then in this case, let's say, for example, the error is 6.7%. Well, the error in this lab was 6.7%, which is more than the 5%. Therefore, Whatever you're supposed to do, did you do it? And if it did not do it, you didn't do it, why it did not work? Or what do you think you need to do to make it work or something like that? That is what I'm looking for the questions. I really want you guys to be as verbose and as actually as accurate as you can be, okay? So if it's asking you, for example, to measure the, the, the uh, let me see something that we can measure in this lab. For example, the current, okay? And you go and measure the current. And the current, current, for example, the average current turned out to be, let's say, for example, 7.23 uh, uh, amperes. And the question is asking you, compare the measured current versus this one, and so on and so forth. And you start writing. You say the current that we measured was 7.23, whereas the value that we're supposed to have is 7.5. Therefore, 7.23 is a little less on which you're within the margin of error, therefore it's acceptable. What is the problem with this whole thing, this whole sentence, if you guys have probably paid attention to, I did not say the units. 7.23, what? You have to be accurate. You have to tell me what was that. Was it in milliamps? Was it in coulombs? Which is completely nonsense. 
or uh, you have to use the units in here. So I'm looking for this kind of things during your answers. Granted, the first lab, you probably are a little bit not used to this method. You were used to other things. So what I will do in here is there is a little bit of leeway in the first lab. What I do actually, when I grade these things, I put a lot of comments. Okay? Even if you get the answer, answer correct or close from correct so that I can count it as correct. What I will put in there is sometimes is that, look, there is something in here that you need to address next time around. Okay, so please pay attention to those comments to make sure you're, you, you, you make your, your reports looking a lot better, okay, in the future. So the purpose of this rubric is like a check mark actually for you. You can come up in here and say, did I do the name? Good, check. Did I do the uh, objective? Check. Did I do question one? Check and so on and so forth until you come to the bottom in here and you say, okay, checked everything, therefore, I should be good. And I met all the requirements so my lab report should be perfect, okay? If there is something that you wanted to come back later on to finish, then you can come back later on and finish, okay? So that's basically the purpose of the rubric. Everything that I do in here, I you will know by the third lab, the fourth lab, basically how the grade for that lab is going to look like or for anything for uh, that we do with you guys you will discover that there is a pattern and you should be fine. I mean, just following those those little stuff, you're going to be in, in good shape. Does everybody understand the purpose of this thing in the bottom? Yes. Uh, professor, yes. I do have a question regarding the lab, though. Yes. Um, For our labs, I know you want, uh, you prefer PDF files. So for the labs, do you expect us to type them out or would you prefer for us to print it out, fill it out, and then upload a scan of it? Okay, uh, either of the above, okay? The key thing in here is you can actually use your pen and write with your own pen, with your handwriting, as long as it's readable, as long as you yourself, when you upload it, you can read it. If you can read it, I can read it too. It has to be clear, it has to be in basically with no ambiguity about it or anything like that. Okay. So if you don't like the lab report and you would want to take the whole thing and put it on Word, that's fine and send, upload the Word. If you would want to use any other thing, that's fine. You can use that. If you want to take an image with your phone and upload the image as a JPEG, that's fine. Whatever format uh, suits you or works for you is fine, okay? Okay, and that's I have it. another question. I don't know if you've already said this, but it's not regarding the lab, it's regarding the class homework. Will the homework be um, assigned on specific due dates since it's on mastering physics or will it all be due at the end of the semester? It should be on specific dates. Okay. They already the due dates are in there. Usually there is about, uh, I think a week and a half or something like that for each assignment. And they are okay. at weeks is the part. Okay, perfect, thank you. Okay. Because they should be preparing you for the exam actually. And there are so assignments that they will be assigning and that you guys will be turning on Canvas, okay? For the homework. And that is again, part of your review for the exam. Okay, thank you. So, uh, I'm going to go more in detail. So today is actually going to be a, on how to do these things, especially I'm going to open the PDF file and I'm going to show you guys how we're going to go basically about that PDF file and how it works, okay? Yes? Can I go on? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Very good. So <laughs> let me open the PDF file right now. Let me first of all, yeah, let me open the PDF file right now. And I'm gonna open it with Adobe. I have Acrobat. Uh, DC, which is probably, if you have access to it, that's great. If not, then uh, 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 the reader should work. Any Acrobat reader should work on this, okay? And let me share with you the PDF itself. Share. Before I do that, let me move this screen to the other side, okay? Because I want this one to be here. This one in here. Let me share. Before I do that, there's a bunch of things in here. Okay, we're ready. 
So let's share screen one. So here is how the PDF file would look like. Anytime you see something in red, that is a required field, okay? That means this thing you must have in your lab report, whether you decide to do it with this lab report form or you decide to do it on, uh, on a um, text file or whatever format you like, okay? You have to have your name on here, okay? So if I'm doing this report, my name is actually DJ Buzidi, okay? Let's say, for example, I worked with Marcella on this report, okay? So I'm going to include also her name in there. It is very, very important you include everybody's name who worked with you on this, okay? Marcella, for example, or, okay, if there are not too many uh, Marcellas in the class. And... <laughs> One of a kind, that's why. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, and the next person probably I worked with too. Try to keep it to under three, maximum four. Okay, don't don't put the entire class as people who worked with you on the lab. That's really counterproductive. So you really have to give me an honest account of everybody who worked with you. Okay, this is actually a plus to your uh, lab report. Let's say for example, Camilo also worked with us on this lab report. Okay, so that's how I would do it. Okay. That's how I would write the lab report. If I am the only one who did this by myself, then I write my name. It is very, very important that you write everybody's name who worked with you in this lab report. If I am grading this lab and things starts to look familiar in terms of data and in terms of wording and in terms of results, I become suspicious. And anybody who does look at your work becomes suspicious is not good in science. Because if you really work with somebody else, Okay, I called Camilo, for example, and I got the idea on how to do things. And now I'm going to go and publish this and say, this is what I came up with. Well, it's not honesty and it's not integrity from my part to not mention Camilo that helped in this, in this, in this report. So that's why it's very important to include every, uh, everyone who worked with you, okay? Like I said, you don't, lose points if you do that. As a matter of fact, that's a plus. The fact that you were able to work with somebody else on something like this is good, okay? This is encouraged. You're actually encouraged to do that, to find partners and work with them on labs. As a matter of fact, also you're encouraged to find partners to work with on homework also. Please stay safe, be safe. Do not actually start to uh, hang around together because then you probably will have other problems and that we don't want, especially because of the COVID thing, okay? Otherwise, establish ways of communications. We have all kinds of options in here. And let me know if you need my help to make sure that this is facilitated. And then at the end, work with somebody, okay? If after you work with somebody or two people, you decide, you know what, I don't agree with their result. I'm sorry, I don't agree with their way of explaining things. I think mine is better. I tried to convince them, but they didn't listen because they think that I was wrong. If I'm convinced with that thought, I can go against their, their, their thinking that we had together, okay? I can say, okay, this is the people I worked with. And my answer to question seven, for example, is this way, despite of the fact of they were saying something else and I tried to convince them and they couldn't convince, they, they were not conv convinced, okay? I would want to see that in here, okay? So that's one thing, area that I'm, I'm, I'm the asking for, okay? Is to put your name, if you worked on the lab by yourself, or the names of other people who worked with, with you, excuse me. You have a problem with the lab. You couldn't get things to work. There is an issue with it of some sort. The simulation is not working for you. The GeoGebra link is not working with you. That's, by the way, the other place that I can, you will find a lot of my labs also have, uh, have uh, uh, are basically animations that I, not animations, simulations that I make myself, okay? Then you let me know. You can come in here with you on, uh, doesn't matter when, hopefully there is a time of convenience. Right now it's really crazy my semester this time around is kind of mess from Monday through uh, Thursday. But Friday should be good. The weekend should be good. We come together and we look at it. And if it's something unique to you, I'm not going to record it. Actually, before recording, I will let you know that because I think this one benefits everybody in the classroom, I'm going to ask your permission to record this session so that we post it later for the benefit of everybody. 
So what happened in this case, I record it, I go back on Canvas, post the recording, and then send an, uh, a message to everybody that, look, there was an issue in here, and this is a solution we came up with. There was a question in here, and this is the answer that we came up with, so that you guys can look at it and basically work your way through it also and include you in uh, the, the activity. So that's basically in terms of working together, whether with me or with anybody else. Remember, this is not an exam. This is not a test. This is for you process to learn more physics, to do things, okay? It's unfortunate that we're doing it online. We're supposed to be in classroom, in the laboratory, doing these measurements, doing these observations. But that's basically the, 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 the sign of the time. We're in the COVID basically restrictions. That's the best we can do right now, okay? You guys understand? Does this make sense to you guys? Yes. Yes. Okay. So you're supposed to read the details in here, what we're trying to achieve, and hopefully you decipher these things and understand what needs to be done. This lab calls for a clear, it has to be clear, uh, what do I call it, uh, magic tape in here. So you cannot bring something else and tell me that you're going to work with has to be this one. I'm going to also call for a string, and it's calling for a ruler, as long as you have a ruler. The purpose of the ruler in here is to come up with about 20 centimeters, 20 centimeters uh, from the tape, from this uh, this tape that you're going to, to cut, okay? So you need a ruler to have a rough estimate. It doesn't have to be exactly 20 centimeters, but roughly about 20 centimeters. The scotch, Tape, you can go outside to a 99 cent store and grab one for probably three of them or four of them for that much or probably less than that, okay? So you should be able to get the materials from anywhere in here. If you can't have a string, you can use a thread. You should be able to do that too, okay? So that's basically the materials for the lab. What are we trying to achieve from the title? You could have an idea, basically. The interactions of electrical charges and the lab itself is on Coulomb's law. So probably what we're testing in here, the fact that two charges of the same sign will repel one another, two charges of different ch sign will attract one another, and uh, the effect of the distance, as the distance grows, the, 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 uh, the force between them decreases, and uh, the direction of the force being in the same line that joins the two charges, okay? So that's probably what we're testing in this lab. So that's gonna be something that you're gonna put in the objective. As a rule of thumb, do not start the objective right away. Leave it toward the end. As a rule of, a rule of thumb, do not forget the objective because I have seen it in the past where people get so much excited about doing this stuff and answering the questions. And now they think that they have completed everything. They did the table, they did everything, and they forget to go back and fill the objective in here, okay? You need the objective. The objective is actually, uh, you can. it's a rich text environment. So for example, it's going to pick up the spelling for you. So it's gonna help you. So please do not ignore the spelling, okay? So that's really, it's a rich text environment so that you can, you can, you can fill it. Now, as I said before, if you opt not to use this fillable file and rather use your Word file or anything else, please also keep the things spelled correctly in here. Keep the text spelled correctly and use the proper punctuation and use also the proper, uh, 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 the casing also. Do not use everything in uppercase or everything in lowercase, okay? Use the proper, basically, uh, casing in here, too. Uh, one more thing about the, uh, if you're going to be type uh, writing with your, hand, your own hand, do the same thing. One thing I forgot to mention, which is critical, actually, for this whole process, is once you write your name, here, save the file, close it, come back to it, and open it again. 
check to see if the name is saved. The reason why is because if you have used the stateless application that does not save, and you type something in here, and uh, you start working, okay? Now you spend probably a lot of time working on these things, filling the data, answering the questions with statements that are basically immaculate, state, statements that are perfect, okay? They cannot be any better. If you add to them, they cannot be, I mean, they are exactly what you think are perfect, okay? And this is several questions, of course, and several tables and graphs that you work very hard on getting them exactly aligned the way they are supposed to align, and you have the labels where they're supposed to be labeled and so on and so forth. And then you say, okay, I'm done. I spent, man, so much time. The entire Saturday afternoon, I spent fixing this thing and I'm glad and proud of what I did. You close it and everything is gone. That's disaster, isn't it? Don't you guys agree? That would Terrible. be disappointing. <laughs> it sucks. I have Acrobat Reader, and my thing says you can't save data typed into this form. You have Acrobat Reader. Do you yeah. want to share the screen to see exactly what you have? Yeah, sure. Let me set it up. OK, let me stop sharing my screen. Right. OK. What, what, what kind of machine is it? Is it Windows environment? It's, just, or is it... it's a Windows, yeah. So this is yeah. Lab 1. Oops. No. Okay, you see, okay, you see that's it. Exactly yeah. Enough. It doesn't yeah. change it if you accidentally open it, though, right? With Windows. No, no, Windows. no. Because you opened it with Chrome first time. Now go ahead, open it with Acrobat Reader DC. Yeah. And, then, type in there. and it gives me this, these two errors. Wait, wait a minute. Or okay. not errors, but it just says cannot save form information. I actually okay. got that as well on mine. Um, it wants you to buy the pro version, um, but if you save it to your desktop uh, and open it like with Microsoft Edge, it'll, um, I believe it'll let you make changes and save it, but I haven't tested it yet. So okay. let me. This is the Acrobat Reader DC. Can you guys get the other Acrobat that I that I asked you guys to download? Is that uh, because I know the old Acrobat, not the DC, not this this version yeah, that they have now. The uh, the old one should sure. work fine. Okay. Microsoft Edge, I know, and Chrome nowadays, I think they are they are doing better job in terms of, uh, of uh, saving PDF files. Yeah, I opened it on Microsoft Edge a second ago, and they have a save option in the top right corner. So I don't you think that would it. make any issues. You don't want to be in a situation after you finish everything. And it happened a lot, to be honest with you, in the past, not at least last, last semester was less of it because people were testing actually before uh, saving stuff. Uh, in the spring, I know that I have so many students who struggled with this one because they upload their work. And then when the time comes to grade, I look at their uh, file and it's completely empty. And I send them back basically message saying, you didn't submit anything, everything is blank. So that happened in the spring of 2020, but in the fall, like I said, since I basically urge my students to double check these things, they do that. First thing is write your name and save it. If it doesn't save, don't waste more time of yours. Just basically, you can do the following, okay? You can refer to the items in a TXT file, text file, name, put your name, so-and-so put your, and attach the file, okay? Just plain text file doesn't matter which platform you have. Uh, even if you don't have Word, if you like to use Word and comfortable with Word, that's fine. But refer to the items. Do not just put answers from top to bottom, and I have no idea where the question starts and where the next one ends, okay? 
Just tell me name, put your name, objective, put your objective, question one, put the answer to question one, question two, and so on and so forth. And append that. Okay? So that's your, 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 uh, your uh, can be. Does this make sense to you, Drake? And everybody else? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this is, you're not required to have this lab report form. Whatever, this is just supposed to help you basically and guide you through your reporting basically for the lab. So if this doesn't work for you, it's still your responsibility to submit the lab report in any format there is to show that you have completed the activity the activities for this lab and basically fulfill the requirement for it, okay? It can be handwritten if you like, as long as you have a good scan or a good imaging uh, device like your phone or something like that, that's fine, okay? Are we good? Yes. Okay, so let me continue with this. Hi. Okay, very good. So uh, basically, I'm going to demo basically this, this thing in here and how it's working, okay? So I'm gonna switch cameras right now. For that, let me remove the background in here, the virtual background. And let me switch cameras. And the camera is gonna be this desk camera. Okay, so what I have in here, actually we need to probably stop sharing, right? Okay, so what I have right now is, let me move this screen in here again back to this screen so that you can see what I'm doing. I have a ruler, as you guys can, can clearly see in here. This is, probably this camera needs to be moved a little bit, okay? And it's extending from one all the way to 20. This is about 20, okay? My finger is probably outside of the realm for it. So this is from one to 20, okay? So what I'm gonna do in here, I'm gonna take this thing in here. I'm going to come up with roughly 20 centimeters. Again, like I said, it doesn't have to be exactly 20 centimeters, but about 20 centimeters. I'm going to cut in here about 20 centimeters of this. Okay. And right around here, around one edge, I'm going to flip it slightly so that it gives me the ability for me, for me to, to play with this tape. So now I'm going to put it on the surface because I'm required to do this so that to make other copies of this one. So now since I have this one on the surface with the edge in here, easy enough for me to lift it, okay? So that's if in case I decide to lift. So that's gonna be the basic format for this entire lab, the basic thing that you need to do for this lab. So now I'm going to make another one because that's what the instruction is asking me to do and roughly the same length. So I don't have to uh, have the ruler now anymore. Got it. And do a similar thing in here and put it on top of the first one. Okay. And then pull it. Okay. After I pull it, you have to be very cautious with it. Okay. I pulled it too, too short. I'm supposed to yank it actually. That's not good. Okay. Now after I pull it, I'm going to supposed to have it on the desk and it's hanging right now. And I'm supposed to bring my finger to it and see and notice the interactions in here. It sticks to my finger, okay? That's what you're supposed to record in your lab report, okay? The first question. Isn't this easy enough for you guys? Yeah, yes. yes. Okay. So you're testing in here because your finger actually is not charged. Your finger is actually being induced 
the charge is actually on the uh, the the charges are actually on the of the tape itself, but it's an induced charge and it show, demonstrates the attraction. And this is similar to let me see if I have that in here. I have a rod in here. Let me see if I can get some paper in here. That you're supposed to rub against a cat or uh, the hair of a uh, uh, what should we call it? Uh, but I don't have any of that, so I'm going to try to do it with my shirt. And I don't have hair, okay? So I can't use my hair. Sorry about that. <laughs> Uh, it did not work. It worked a little bit because I don't have enough uh, charge that I have created off of it. Okay, I'm using a different kind of cloth in here. Let me see if that's going to show it. No, it's not working. Not enough charges in here. So again, what, what this will demonstrate with the balloon also, it demonstrate the law of the in how you induce a charge. Let me try another piece of cloth. Oh, that's too smooth. You need the uh, uh, hair, and it should work fine. Up, oh, it did jump. You guys see that? Now it discharged. Did you see it or not? Yeah. I'm sweating yes. in here. You're not supposed to be supporting because <laughs> it barely jumped. There yeah. you go. <laughs> okay. It does not work for it that much. Okay. But hopefully, you guys, this one will work and this will show the induction in here because this one will carry a lot of charges with it. Okay. I know that because I did it several times and I hope you guys should not have any difficulty with it. Okay. So let me go back into the other camera in here. If I can find it. OK. So basically, uh, oh, I should have probably rubbed it against my beard because I have more hair in my face than in my head. <laughs> anyway, the point in here is that you're supposed to uh, do this experiment. You're supposed to make a lot of these shapes. One of the things that at some point, if it becomes, and you would want to neutralize, if it has too much charge, and you would want to neutralize it or actually reduce some of the charge in it. So I just lifted it and it's stuck into my hand because of this charge. So what I can do in here, I can rub my finger against it a little bit. And in doing so, I'm taking some of those charges. So I'm, because at some point you're supposed to have one of them strongly charged and another one weakly charged, and you're supposed to make up uh, a decision into how, how uh, uh, now right now it's completely neutral. I think I neutralized it. They killed all the charges in it, okay? So that's one of the questions they ask you on how to make it neutral. Another one, at some point, what you will do, you'll make two of this. The one that is sitting in there, it's the same thing, okay? You make two of this, and you split them from one another. So one of them will carry one sign of charges, the other one will carry a different sign of charges and they will be attractive, okay? But if you rub them against the same material, you're going to take the same kind of charges and they will be repulsive. So you should be able to test all of Coulomb's laws with this type of this entire experiment. So let me share with you the, uh, the file that I had before, the PDF file with the instructions and all. And we are still in screen one. So that's basically the setup in here on how to do this one. You should be able to do it. Once you do it, you're set up, you have to take a picture of it, okay? Because at some point you're required to have a picture uploaded. So that's a separate thing, okay? So you're gonna assign, upload the actual report plus a picture. If you don't include the picture, you're gonna lose points on it too. So please make sure the picture is included there in your lab report too. So, uh, once that's done, you're going to answer questions starting from here. You're going to put your finger the way that I was showing you in there. And you're going to note which way is attracted, if it's attracted. Or write a description of what happens when you bring your hand near the tape. Does it matter which side of the tape to your hand, uh, you approach it, one way or the other? So again, you're going to try it one way and the other and see which one. Uh, does it matter? And if it matters, which way? If it doesn't matter, then you're going to describe what happened in there. Okay. Again, you're going to make another type 
of uh, of uh, now two of them. Okay, then you check the repulsion. So you make one, you make another one, and you bring them closer from one another and see what happened in this case. Okay. Please follow the instructions on all of this. I suppose it should be self-describing. If you have difficulty with the steps, please let me know. And each time you do something, there is a question that you need to answer. And again, uh, you have to have it in full sentence and things like that. In this case, there is no quantitative quantitative measurements. It's all of it qualitative. So there is no units in here to worry about in this lab. So it's all of the descriptions, okay? Uh, again, probably this is what we saw in theory that the forces are along the direction. They are not perpendicular like in here. So that's what we're going to be testing now, the direction of the force, of this electrostatic force. So does the paper slide in and out, or does the paper move one way or the other? I mean the tape, I'm sorry. When you put, you have to use a thread in this case, okay, next to one of them that is hanging, and you're supposed to, because the thread will give you a choice, because if you have it with your hand, you're influencing the result. Now you're gonna honestly test if this force is along the line between the two charges as described above. Because that's what we claimed in the lecture. We claimed that the force is along that direction and that's where we put pull that R hat unit, if you, uh, R hat, unit vector R hat, if you guys remember. So that's what we want to test in this lab here, okay? And again, you're gonna describe your results in here. There is a graph in here that is worth, I think, three points in this case. Usually graphs are worth more because you need the scale on the x-axis, you need the scale on the y-axis, you need the label for everything in here, you need the data also point shown, and you need if there is a trend line there showing the trend line. Because this one is a sketch, it's not worth as much, it's worth only three points. Normally, graphs are worth six points, but for this lab, it's only worth three points, okay? Again, because it's hard to do in here, you could do it by hand and include it, or you can take a picture somewhere else and include the picture separately if you don't want to use this, uh, this lab report in here. Some of this PDF stuff in here, what could happen to the writing thing in here? Where is the, uh, I don't want to create, what is the edit capability of this thing in here? Edit PDF. I want just to draw things. Can I draw? No, I don't want to sign. I think probably there is something wrong with this specific PDF file, okay? I'm gonna test to see why is that. Because probably I think there is an issue with this actual PDF file. I will try to see what's wrong with it. Uh, I don't like this version of Acrobat uh, PDF uh, editor. I used to have the old version, I think version 11, and it was working beautiful for me. And I think that's how I generated this PDF files too. Anyway, I have complaints. Uh, this is actually what I was talking to you to weaken the, uh, the, the charge by just basically rubbing your hand through it to bring it down a little, okay? So you can cancel the interaction altogether by remove the removing the charges from it. You're gonna describe what happened in here and so on and so forth. So I'm hoping that you guys should not have any difficulty with this lab. Like I said, I want to get into the table in here. What is the table in here? So this is how you make the L and the U, okay? By the hanging two of them and then pulling one of them. And now you have two different types of them, okay? And the U and the L and all of these interactions. Now you're going to find the interaction between two similar, basically, uh, ones. Do they repel or attract one another? Uh, if they are of the same type, U and U. If they're of the type L and L, do they attract or repel? I expect that this will be a repulsion for either case. And this one, do they attract? And if they do, you are going to mention that in here. If you don't observe that they attract, please be honest about it. Tell me they didn't attract. And the reason is probably because, for, for example, there was an issue with the way that you had it, and that's fine, okay? The, 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 the key thing in an experiment is not necessarily to meet expectation of the theory. It's more to actually do the activity to confirm the theory. If you cannot confirm it, that's fine, okay? Uh, you don't lose any points if you explain what went wrong, okay?
okay? That's basically what the pro promise is. If you don't explain it, then you will lose points, okay? If you're expecting, for example, in here an attraction and you don't get an attraction, you say it was repulsive, and you leave it as is, then there is a clear contradiction between the theory and the experiment. I expect you to tell me what went wrong, either with the experiment or maybe the theory needs to be revised, okay? You need to address those issues. Don't leave them hanging. Okay, with the one that is partially charged, left bed of the discharge, with one that is fully charged, we expect the effects of the charge in here, the force to be less, okay? Again, you're going to do the electric force direction between a U and U and U and L. For the U and U and U and L, it should be really going on the same line, whether going in or going out, okay? That's what the direction. And the effects of the distance, the further away, the less force there is, and so on and so forth. Every cell is usually worth one point, okay? So if you forget one of them, you lose points. I think the rubric will tell you to actually lose more than one point for if you forget uh, one. The table is worth eight points. If you miss one or more, it's worth five points. If you don't include anything, it goes back to zero. Usually tables is where you get the biggest points in there. Oh, I see. Question nine is a problem. Okay, I think I have to fix this. Describe the electrostatic interaction between that. So there is question nine that is missing a field. So this, this lab report, I'm going to update it. That's why I think I had a lab report in there. Still use the second, not the first. Is the second any better than the first? I'm checking the second one in here quickly to see if Question nine, what is question? Yes, use the second one. The second one, let me stop sharing that screen and show you this screen. Drake, can you try to do the same thing with, uh, because there are two, there is, if you look at the instructions, it says the second one, use the second one instead. Do you see it? Yeah, I'll try to use that one right now. Yeah. Because I'm looking at it right now, and I see it has already a uh, question nine. Which one? The, the first one did not. And let me see if I can edit this PDF. This one is editable. The first one, remember, I couldn't edit it. It was sending me some nonsense stuff. Right now, yeah, it's this one works correctly now. So, okay, so. Please, I'm going to, I should really, let me, let me edit this quickly in here and probably fix that, that link because I don't want you to guys use that file altogether. Because I think I corrected it after the fact, after some people reported problems with it in the past. And I guess I did not make that change permanent. So I should really have made that change permanent to this lab report and I copied it from my class in the past. Okay, let me go back into the first one and edit additions. I want to go back home and I go back to the end. Yes. So what I did right now, I made both links the new one. So if you click on the top one or the bottom one, you're going to get the, the new file that is, that should work, okay? So let me close this. How do I close the edit? Okay, so so this one has question nine because the first one has no room for question nine to answer anyway. So you're gonna run into the same situation as the people before you, okay? So what I did now is that I edited the file so that both links are the new file. Okay, you see, when you guys come in here, we discover problems. If Drake was not here today, we would probably not have thought about this thing and maybe you guys are struggling with this thing. So I'm glad that you guys show up and uh, address these things. So the conclusion, by now you know what you did and what you have results. Try to refer to your data when you're, uh, uh, when you're uh, making the conclusion based on this table, basically what you <coughs> saw. And also uh, uh, if there is, look, for this lab, there is no measurements, okay? And you will see my comments for the next few labs. Conclusion must connect, and even for this one, must connect to the uh, to the uh, objective. 
So you must refer to what you said yourself you're gonna be doing in the objective, number one. Number two also, it must include data. For your case, it doesn't have data. This is your data in here. It's this table in here. This is your observations, okay? This is what I have found. This is what we saw, okay? And it also must include errors because this lab does not have any measurements, so therefore it does not have any errors, okay? So that is the key for it. It has to be at least a paragraph long, okay? And not a paragraph, I'm sorry, three sentences long. Hopefully about a paragraph, two paragraphs, at most three paragraphs if it's too verbose, okay? The objectives try to stick to a single paragraph, not try, you have to stick to a single paragraph and try to keep it short, okay? Don't be too verbose in the objective because you would want to be precise, right to the point of what you need to do. Conclusion, can be details, actually it should be detailed. That's the difference between the two. And don't forget to include the picture of your lab. So that's the entire lab for this time around. Any question about the process or the specific lab or anything like that? No, no. Okay, so as promised, what I'm gonna do now, if you get, first of all, I will stop the recording. After that, we, I will leave the session open. If you guys choose to hang around and work your lab report, that's fine. If you think you need to go and grab those materials so that you can get your stuff going, that's fine, you can leave too. And uh, you can shout if you have a question, well, the, because I'm gonna turn off my camera and also mute my sound and I will be able to get back to you in here till 8 p.m., 8, 10 p.m. Sounds like it's a good plan? Yes. yes. Okay, so I'm gonna stop the recording first. No, go ahead. Okay, so I have a question regarding your grading. I know you gave us a rubric, but um, how often will grades be updated? So like, I know you have other classes, but how like often okay. are grade That's a good question. Usually the, and that's a very good question actually, it leads me to an important thing. There is a deadline for your uh, assignment, okay? Usually I have about a week window to grade your things. Okay. What I try to do the first time around for any assignment is to grade it right away, right on the deadline, okay? Maybe two or three days later, okay? That is how I do, this one, because I don't want you to really be halfway in the semester before you discover that you've been doing everything up to that point, not correct. I want you from the first assignment before you actually do the next assignment, you know how a grade thinks and you know how things are working. Now, in terms of the due date, in terms of when the assignment is due, there is actually leeway in here. I mean, there is a hard deadline, which you really need to work with. But if I don't grade your assignment and you still have three days, for example, later, that is if, I, if you wish a window for you to work the, 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 the details and make sure that everything is, is, uh, is, is, uh, is fixed. Because if I didn't grade your assignment, you didn't get a final grade for it. Let's say, for example, somebody forgot to do some in the lab and it's passed already March 2nd, okay? Mm -hmm. And they remembered on March 3rd and they didn't see that they have a zero already in the lab they still have to go and rush and put that lab together and submit it. Because by the time I come in and there, it's going to tell me it's late, but I'm going to count it anyway because I didn't grade that thing. But if they come in, for example, on March the 5th, and I already graded it on March the 3rd or the 4th, and they got a zero, I cannot go back and change that grade. Okay. okay it's too late. Okay? Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, and then also for the mastering physics, did you allow us to do um, extra credit? Because I know like when you try a problem and you get it wrong after a certain number of times, it'll give you a 0%. And I know it's for our own like benefit to practice, but um, like let's say you get five wrong and five right, it gives you a 50% on the assignment. Okay, for mastering, if you have a specific question or a specific problem, please communicate with me. Sometimes I notice that they are not working fine. There is a pro issues with the problems themselves. So if there is a, something that try, uh, that comes into play, and it happened actually with the class the other day, is what I want them to do is actually submit the actual uh, 
problem, that specific problem to uh, to Canvas, okay? okay? And I will make a room available for it on Canvas. So if something happens and you notice something that is not odd, let's say, for example, it asks you to graph something, and this has happened actually with the graphs of data. When you graph it, whichever way you do it, it seems like it's coming wrong. It's giving you zero, zero, zero. After you basically did exhaust all of your attempts, uh, you don't do it right because it's looking for a specific line in here and you miss it completely, it gives you the entire thing is wrong. Okay. Mm -hmm. You could go to Excel and take that data and plot it and it's going to be perfect. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you're fine. I mean, at least for me, if you use Excel, that's great. Actually, I want you to use Excel. So, uh, but their, their, their graphing tool is kind of uh, not working right. So if there is something like this, please let me know that there is an issue with this specific problem. I go and look at it, justify it. Then what I do, I make create a room for it on Canvas. And I ask everybody, if you're running to the same situation as an option, submit your assignment in here, graph it with hand if you like, and finish the assignment. And I will override whatever a master in physics is saying that you have gotten into that uh, specific assignment. OK, thank you. No problem. Any other question? Okay, I'm gonna stop the recording again.